Had a very good evening, everyone. Yes, it's a piping hot day, a bit windy in Boston. A full house, and I think it really is indicative of just how much the Nigerians have emerged on the world stage. That so few people are prepared to predict with any degree of confidence just who is going to win this game. Let's look at the Nigerian side here. Well, they're fielding more or less their strongest lineup. Egwavan is back at right back. He's returning after injury, replacing Keshi. In midfield, Okocha comes in for Siasia. Otherwise, it's the usual lineup with the pace and power of Abokachi and Yukini, augmented by the popping of Elise and the two flat men, Fadidi George on the right, Abudiki on the left. Well, it's not been a smooth passage by any means for the Italians. The setting off of Pagliuca, followed by various injuries, the most serious, of course, Franco Baresi's. Paolo Maldini then switches to a central defensive role with Torino's Roberto Musi slotting in at left back in midfield. Donadoni starts with Dino Baggio, not 100% fit. And up front, Daniele Massaro, goal scoring entrance, of course, from him as a substitute against the Mexicans, and that's earned him promotion to the starting lineup. Well, Ron Atkinson, you've spent a couple of hours trying to pronounce the names now. How do you think the, the Nigerians are going to shape up here? I think you've got an intriguing contest. The sophisticated Italians and the raw aggression of the Nigerians. And I'm looking, looking at their, their front players, their midfield lineup. They look as if they've got a lot of players in Nigeria who are prepared to carry the fight. And I'm not too sure, particularly in midfield, uh, whether the Italians can cope with that. I mean, obviously, what they mustn't do is let Italians dominate the style of play. Well, Arrigo Saki, the coach on the Italian side, says his team are the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde of the World Cup. I think if pressed, he might even agree we've seen more so far of Hyde than Jekyll. And in Saki's words, Nigeria, with their strength and their unpredictability, are not the side he would have chosen to meet at this stage. A game, he says, in which we have little to gain and so much to lose. The Italians in their all-white strip, about to kick off, attacking the goal to our right. The referee tonight is from Mexico. Toro Brizio Carter, his linesman also from South America, Taibi of Argentina, Zarate of Paraguay. Fabulous atmosphere inside the stadium, looking around, not too many empty seats than I could see. And certainly the Nigerians have felt at home here in Boston. They regarded this as their second home, they say. And I'm sure they're going to put up formidable opposition to the Italians, who really haven't got into top gear so far. This is Emanalo on the left side now for the Nigerians. Ben Eroha, we thought, was going to come back into the side after injury, but I gather he's not fully fit. And they may well miss Nigeria, the attacking sorties that he makes down the left side. Musi in the Italian lineup. Then it's only the second game that he started for the Italians. On by Sikiori. Senior, who will be playing in a deeper role here than he does for his club Lazio, for whom, of course, he's been the top scorer in Serie A for the past two seasons now. Who kick to Italy for the foul on Signori. That's a part of the game they're going to be, have to be very careful of. They have been a bit reckless, the Nigerians, in previous games with their challenges, giving away a lot of free kicks, and that's the one thing they don't want to be doing against the, the Italians. This is Amoniki, who scored a superb goal in the first game against Bulgaria when the Nigerians really looked a class above Bulgaria. Now here's Massaro, the new hero of the Italian fans. And that'll be the first yellow card of the game. And no real complex there from Emanalo. Yes, I mean, we talk about naivety, that's sheer stupidity, really. This early stage in the game. Massaro really got plenty to do, and he's, he, Emanala's going to get himself unnecessarily booked. Well, the Nigerians, and rightly so, are worried about the foraging up front of Massaro, who had such a marvellous season for Milan, scored twice, of course, at the European Cup final. At the age of 33, he's re-emerged again on the international scene. Baggio then with a free kick. No left in fact for Signore to whip it over. That claimed by Peter Rufai. Must say claimed very, very late in flight as well. It was a harmless ball once it had gone past the pack of players. But Rufai didn't react to that. One stage I thought we were going to get a shot first goal. 
Certainly did seem there just for a moment that he might be deceiving the goalkeeper. But in fairness to him, he's had a good World Cup. Looked away by Maldini. It's not an unfamiliar role, of course, playing in the centre. That was his task in the European Cup final. With Barresi and Costa Curta both out. Bakajiari, that'll do his confidence no harm. The number two goalkeeper in the squad with Paliuka suspended. Up by Donadoni. Here's Signori. And time for Musi. He was a very versatile player, he can adopt any number of roles. Slotted in here at right back with Benarivo down the left. On by Baldini. This is Benarivo. Luaru is the sweeper on the Nigerian side. Olise, the man who is moving them to Reggiana next season, so he'll be meeting many of his adversaries today again. Banjo, we haven't seen the best of him by a long way yet. He has been playing with an Achilles heel problem, which has certainly been a hindrance to him. Signori with the pass off. Engelvat to tidy up at the back for Nigeria. Hugo Saki, a man very much under pressure for the Italians to do well in this competition. A lot of criticism back home, and there certainly will be plenty more if they go out today. I remember back in 66 from the tournament in England when they arrived home after losing to North Korea and they were parted with rotten tomatoes. Yakini's pass. To Didi George. They have some very strong players up front. This is Yakini now. Trying to set up Amokachi. Now, Amodiki. Three in the middle, including Yakini. Now, Masaro on the break for the Italians. He's got Baggio up in support. Masaro is running it on towards Baggio. Still more danger. Still for Hatball. You know, Peter, looking at the Nigerians, this is the most attack-minded formation I've seen. And well, they're certainly attacking now. Yakini, who is such a belligerent striker. Yeah, hasn't quite done it in the tournament yet, has he? He hasn't lived up to expectations. But looking at them, they're a bit inclined to play with two, two wide men. Yakini well up the middle. And Makachi just short of him, but they are leaving themselves a little bit short in, in terms of midfield players. Now Masaro looking to stretch up the flags up though for offside. Yeah, he'll do that well. I mean, he was offside, but he'll make that run well. He'll spin on the shoulders of the defenders, and he's got himself a booking now, presumably for arguing. Well, that was foolish by Masaro. A player of such vast experience. And it really has been a fairy tale comeback for him on the international stage. Won his first cap 12 years ago, Masaro. And recalled after, well, eight years after his last game, before his recent return. Emanalu. The Italians in the crowd certainly outnumbering the Nigerians. But my word, they are a vociferous crew, those who follow the African champions. Very flamboyant. Not a daily with a pass, touched on him by Berti, now here's Baggio. Lucy had made the run outside him, but a foul on Baggio. And there certainly is an aggressive side to the Nigerians game, 33 fouls they committed against Argentina. I think that's a record for a World Cup game. Baggio may not have hit his peak in this competition so far, but he's still such a dangerous player. And Baggio now organising the free kick. Signori is there with him. Touched off to Signori. Didn't really get hold of it though.
just looking at the Nigerians with them with them giving so much attention to width it's very important that people like Amakani on the on this left hand side George on the other side are, are prepared to uh, track defenders back because Musi and Benarivo particularly um, will, will want to get forward at every occasion Aldini with the pass it was Guadu who came across and now here in certainly showed some naivety against the Argentines when they lost their concentration to concede goals from free kicks. And they say they've learned from that. And they're only making the run. Now here's Yakini. The man they call the Kaduna Bull. Emanalu searching for Yakini. It's cut up though by Costa Quarta. Oh, that was marginal. Okay, Chuck will just stood up just in time. I don't even think uh, Masaru was offside that time. I think he does what he does well, spins on the uh, shoulder of the defender. And I think the second defender stood up on him after the ball was in flight then. This is Okachuku. He's with Fedabachi at Turkey. 17 of the players in the Nigerian squad operate for European clubs. Maybe one or two more as well by the end of the tournament. Marco Gianni, the world's most expensive goalkeeper. This is Albertini. Stopping passes with Baggio. Albertini. I think they'll miss Dino Baggio today, Rob, won't they, the Italians? Yeah, he's got great power and great strength to run from the middle of the park, and that's always a good thing, you know. There's no flag this time. Siduri is onside. Masato and Baggio have both gone into the middle. Here's Baggio looking for Berti. Emanalo away. And that was an important head event for the Nigerians. Amuniki. Here's Okocha who's starting his first game for the Nigerians in this World Cup. And certainly he looked very influential when he came on as a sub in the last game against the Greeks. Free kick to Italy. Donadoni. Benarivo. And the Italians will look to get it down that left side. He's equally happy on either flank. Benaribo. Now, Signori. Almost linking up with Baggio. Masaro was in there lurking as well. Here's Amuniki. Okocha. He's with Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany. by Donadoni to Massaro, Baggio and offside against Berti down this near side well I saw Switzerland on Saturday come unstuck doing that I've got a feeling Nigeria will come unstuck they don't trying to play this offside trap they don't look particularly good at it and every time Italy gets somebody to run from a deep position or one of the fullback uh, positions always appears as if there's going to be a chance it's a risky game to play that's for sure yeah, particularly, as I say, with the interpretation, with re um, the referees tending to favour the attacking side. I mean, Italy themselves in the opening game were playing it and were awful at it against the Republic. Time here for Costa Curta. The Italians who have scored just two goals so far then in the World Cup Finals. And they're hoping that Masaru can provide that missing touch up front. Donadoni. Well, looking at the tactical play of the uh, Nigerians, I can't help thinking of you know some of the some of the great Italian signs would have looked at and go, oh, we'll have some fun here. We'll knock it about in midfield for fun. Well, Rigo Saki is a great tactician, but he was certainly very concerned about the Nigerians and how they might play. Signori now. Now, can we get across it here towards Masaro? And also Baggio! 
The first real chance that the Italians have created. And it was Roberto Baggio, who hasn't scored for the Italians since September, who was on the end of the cross. Yeah, that was a goal. That was going in. I mean, that's a tremendous block. It's a good, deep, deep cross from Signori. Baggio arriving late, gets, gets the ball in. Great defensive block. I think now they've got the keeper beaten, all ends up. It's a throw to Italy, which Moussi will leave for Berti to take. Berti who will patrol this right side then for the Italians. No foul, Amuniki, it's left Moussi distraught on the ground. Now, can the Nigerians capitalise on this? By Okocha. But covering though by Maldini. Hamakachi. Like Yakini is so strong when he's in full flow. He'll think he's been cheated there, you know, out of a corner. The Lions been actually single the corner for that uh, when he used his strength. He's been impressed with Abukachi. Now, Moussi is having some attention off the field. He's lipped back on. And he'll look to run the injury off. Asaro now. Again, the defending by the Nigerians. Yakini. The next season will be with Olympiakos in Greece. Having been the top scorer in Portuguese football last season with Vittoria Setubal. Abuniki. And the service is poor this time to Abukachi. I'm not so sure the number 11 Amuniki will agree with you on that one, Pete. I think that he felt that he's played the ball into a decent area and possibly would have looked for more response from the two from two punk players, Amukachi and Yakini. Yeah, maybe there are a lack of anticipation. Certainly from Abukachi, who was the most forward player. Back by Benoivo of Parma. Al Costa Curta, who had such a fine season alongside Baresi in the Milan back four. And they forged a great partnership too for the Italians, but of course Baresi, with a serious knee injury, taking no further part in the competition. So they have had to reorganise at the back the Italians. It's Maldini who's been chosen to play alongside Costa Curta. Here's Olise. Okay, Chuku. Now Signori. He certainly has a deeper role, Ron, Signori, than he has for Lazio. Do you feel he's in his best position here? I think and he prefers himself, I think he tries to play in the inside left gully, more or less in the front position. I don't think he's entirely happy playing in this wide area. He does it because he's perhaps the most natural left-sided player they've got. Talking of left-sided players, look at this leg go at them. Run out, of, run out of grass, run out of steam. And out of support too. Yeah, I think that uh, that's something they'll be very aware of, not letting uh, Amaniki have a run at them on this side. I notice normally every time he's had the ball, uh, the right, the right fullback Musi's clattered into him. That's the first time we've let him have a run at him. A Nigerian injury here to contend with. And it is Amal Kachi. Well, I think you've uh, been interested in for some while, Amal Kachi, Ron, but uh, you couldn't pronounce his name properly. He never answered your phone calls, <laughs> did he? <laughs> Not surprising, really. Yeah, there was the incident again with Amal Kachi. I tell you what, I saw him play a couple of times against Glasgow Rangers in the European Cup. For Bruges, and that's, he looked tremendous in those games. Big, strong, powerful. Voted the top African in the Belgian league last season. Abukachi, but now he's having to be stretched off here. Well, I don't think I've seen anyone go off in a stretcher yet and not been back oh. here besides five seconds, so he might be the first. Certainly a big fella to carry off on that stretcher. No sign yet of any substitution, so they'll hope to get him back on as soon as possible. 
Nigeria sportingly throwing the ball back to Bakajiari. Albertini, such a fine passer of the ball. Here's Donadoni now. Movement from Masaru. And safely back to Peter Rufai, who has been with go-ahead Eagles in Holland, but is now considering a move maybe to England, maybe to Germany. He's had offers, he says. It's not you, Ron. <laughs> not at all. You've not been off the phone since you've been here. It's offside against Yakini. The other big contrast in stars, of course, is Italy like to play short through midfield. That's a longer ball for a runner. But by and large, uh, the Nigerians are looking to hit a lot of long diagonal balls up to their two central strikers, Bikini and Amokichi. Well, they finally worked this one clear. And now Abukachi wants to come back off. That certainly has been the norm for the uh, World Cup Finals. Players have gone off, and most have returned pretty swiftly. Okachukwu with Nuanu, the sweeper. Egwavan. Another of the European base players, Egwavan. Caribo. Here's Donadoni. Albertini. Off to Costa Curta, his Milan teammate. Now, Massaro. That was his first international goal, isn't it, Massaro? When he came on to score against the Mexicans. But still, Italy having to settle for the draw. Abocacci. Now, Fididi George. He scored a real cracker of a goal against the Greeks. And then Abocacci with an even better one to make it 2-0. This is Okocha. Support from Aboniki. Now, Sante Olise. They get the final ball. Simply not good enough. Up to uh, trouble Arrigo Saki's team. A lovely little bit of skill from Okocha there, wasn't it, in the corner? A couple of little drag backs rolling. A little cameo of skill there. Donadoni up for Massaro. Very nearly got Signorian claiming a handball, and it's been given. It could have been even more serious for the Nigerians. Well, they're protesting, but uh, we're a fair way away from here. It looked like handball. It was definitely handball. In fact, he's actually stopped them from getting clear through. That's a, I mean, that would have been a lovely little lay from uh, Masaro into the run of Signori. There's many that might think that could have been interpreted as deliberate handball. So a real opportunity here then for the Italians. Signori is there, Baggio of course. And Donadoni has now gone across. Rufai in the Nigerian goal. If he anxious to get his angles right, he'll know all about Signori and Baggio. The wall has done its job well enough. Wasn't a great free kick though, was it? Wasn't, wasn't struck well. Similar to the early one from Signori. We've seen some outstanding free kicks in this World Cup. We've seen some very poor ones as well. Here's Massaro now. Could be something on here. Signori looking to scamper through. You know, every time Massaro, you're saying, you know, he hasn't started in many of the games. Every time Massaro picks up a ball and has that little link, particularly with Baggio, you know, some of the one-touch play between them is electric. I think they'll be quite happy uh, with the style that the Nigerians have adopted. The Nigerians are very, very spaced out as a team, playing with the full width. But I think that's leaving an awful lot of room for the Italians to dominate the tempo of the game. You know, you always sense something might happen around the edge of the box, particularly between Signore, Massaro and Baggio, when they start putting their little combinations together. That was absolutely awful from Signore. One or two of the little link-ups have been brilliant. I certainly feel the arrival of Massaro has given the Italians more mobility up front. Cassiaraghi can see a bit static, a bit one faced Very strong in the air, of course, and what he is as well. What he is as well, but he's got such a great knowledge of how to play up front. Sometimes he comes short, sometimes he pulls away from the defender on the shoulder. And he puts his success down to the fact that he works so hard. He said the older you get, the harder you have to work. He's certainly done that for Milan and now for Italy. Costa Curta.
Over 20 caps now for Costa Curta. At the heart of the Italian defence. This is Amokachi taking the throw. And that error has given the Italians back possession again. Berti. Al Signori. Again, he'll look for an angle run, maybe from Massaro. Here's Massaro now. And for once, his distribution let him down. Yakini. The leading goal scorer in the African Nations Cup, Yakini, as well as the qualifying rounds for Nigeria. Flags up. Offside. That was unnecessary for Yakini. That's about the fifth time he's been caught offside. He's looking along the line. They're playing that diagonal ball, which is obviously part of their plan. And it's cost them trouble at the other end at the moment. Roberto Baggio looked to be obstructed then by Eduardo. The referee has worked for the free kick. That's experience. That's Roberto Baggio's experience. He knew he was gonna, wasn't going to run the sweep in Iwano. And I think he's deliberately taken it into him there. He's bought a foul there. But can the Italians take advantage of it? Signori once more will come across. Maybe to whip one over for the likes of Maldini, who's come up from the back. Benarivo's in there as well. Certainly a lot of space between the goalkeeper and the last line of defenders for them to float this one into. And Signori, different route this time, and nearly crept in as well. Goalkeeper did well to hang on then as Maldini came rushing in towards him. I mean, Signori must look at that when he's taking a free kick and think, oh, that's lovely, I'll just play the ball into that space there and see what happens. I think they've, they, if they're going to defend, they've got to defend an awful lot deeper than that Nigeria. Otherwise, they're inviting that sort of way, they, where the attacking player is normally favourite because he's running in on goal. Collection of ed errors there, just managed to get out of trouble. Bocacci to Fenidi George from Ajax in Hood. This is Amuniki. Two of his teammates in the box. And just for a moment then, I thought maybe Yakini had lost the marking. To be fair, I thought he was going to attack. It was a lovely ball put in from Emaniki on the, from the left-hand side. He saw two defenders are double banking him, can't go past them, sticks the ball in the danger area, and you would have thought the likes of Rashidi Yakini would have been flying in on the end of that. Well, they have a corner, which George is going to take. Now, this is where you would expect them, if the quality of the ball is good, you would expect them to be dangerous here, wouldn't you, with some of the power and the big guys they've got. They've got some big fellows in there. Okocheku has come up from the back. Yakini as well, of course, was a terrific header of the ball. And here is a chance and a goal! Nigeria had scored! Well, what an upset here. George with the corner. Yeah, they've done well to keep this one back in the box. Just forced it back in, it's actually cannoned off one of the Italian defenders. Oh, you're not going to miss that, are you? Tuck that away. Here okay, we see it again. I actually thought at first one of the Nigerian big lads was keeping it in, but the defenders put the ball back in play. They're looking for a little offside, they've cleared the line quickly, the, the Italians, but not a suggestion of it. So what a setback here then for the Italians. I have to say the sunlight is so strong on our monitor here, it was hard to see who hooked it in at the finish. So the Nigerians have taken the lead. And Arrigo Saki's team are in big trouble. Hamadiki, we feel got the final touch there. And we were worrying about the threat that would be on the Italians from the set piece. And that has proved justified. Donadoni, here's Badger. It's a foul on Abuniki. The man who scored the two crucial goals that brought them through to the World Cup finals. Abuniki in their decisive game. Foul by Albertini. 
That was a bad call by Albertini as well, wasn't it? You know, we've seen players getting booked for all sorts of things, and he's been let off with that one. Well, that's Clements Westerhoff, the coach of Nigeria. He says his team of have not just to play in the World Cup, but to win it. Well, they've had a great start against the Italians. We may have the pedigree. But the Nigerians, whose fans are at great heart now, have certainly proved they're a match for the three times world champions. That's where football makes you laugh, doesn't it? Or makes you cry if you're the opposite manager. And that's the free kick there again, but you're looking at it, I've been a little bit disappointed with the way Nigeria had played because I'd looked forward to seeing them play and I felt that Italy were very, very comfortable and I thought if there was a goal going to come, at this stage it would have to come from Italy. Although we, although we do know that they're going to be extremely dangerous, Nigeria, and anything where they can load power into the uh, proceedings. The throw taken by Berti, here's Roberto Baggio, up to Berti again. Asaro in the middle, another despairing clearance then by the Nigerians, by Iwanu. Here's Abuliki coming back on. Donadoni with the cross. This is Benarivo. Albertini, that took a bad bounce then. Bobble very unkind before him, and here's the break now for the Nigerians. This is where they are, so dangerous when they come soaring forward. And they've got the free kick. A little bit offside there if he played it off. Yellow card. Yukini, the pro, was set tumbling. He was in full stride then. He also had players in support there, and as I say, desperate stakes here. It's going to take him on. Costa Curtis has gone desperate against him. Once again, I think he, in the current climate, is lucky to get away with no, nothing more than the reprimand. Half an hour gone in the first half. The hobbling figure of Costa Curta, but he's OK. And another opportunity there for Nigeria. Four or five of them in a huddle over the ball. Harpersley into the wall, though. Here's Egwaza. The Wanu. A kick for Yakini. Costa Curta has got the dinner of him in the air. And this time the front is hopelessly wide. But you see the encouragement of goals given as soon as that ball dropped down when Yakini and Costa Curta were competing for it. Watch George catch up play here. He sprints past Benarivo and possibly, if he hadn't been so excited, might have taken it on. Well, certainly the Nigerians rate him very highly, Benidi George. So do Ajax, I know, in Holland. They had a very uh, promising season for them. Better Revo now. Donadoni. Here's Roberto Baggio. The jewel in the Italian crowd, but really yet to shine in these World Cup finals. Albertini just getting a foot in there. Better Revo. Donadoni. Benarivo that made the rock for it, but Donny Donny doesn't need him. Now Baggio towards Masaru, who's stretching but can't reach it. Maldini. Benarivo trying to thread it through, but again the Nigerian defenders standing firm. And here comes the counter attack. Costa Curta, the covering defender. Maldini. Here's Baggio. Foul by Nwadu. Obdurate figure at the back for the Nigerians. Albertini. Looking for the run here of Musi. And that'll be a corner if it goes. Not the best appearance is by Olise. Berti. 
still the Italians making no headway. Abukachi, now Yakini to chase. And Costa Curta getting the better of him. But really just that one chance so far for the Italians. And I think the Nigerians want to make a substitution. They can't do it at the moment. Up towards Yakini. Benarivo. Here's Albertini. Now Signori. Donadoni, a long cross towards Massaro. Oh, was it a push then in the box? The Italians appealing for a penalty, and the Mexican referee, just a few yards away, says no. For me, yes. For me, definitely. I mean, a, a great little header back from Massaro. At first, I thought he was going to have a go at goal himself. Signori now, weaving past the tackles. It's Bedlam in the stadium. I don't think the referee's blown, though. There's no foul again. At first view, that looked a penalty. Yes, yeah, certainly, he certainly the, the, the Nigerian defenders pushed him as he was, he was trying to head the ball home. He got a tap in, firstly. Well, whistles all around the stadium from the many, many Italian fans here. In time, a substitution being made, and Abakaki is having to go off. Had a Poju, who's been a substitute. We were just seeing again there the incident. Well, in the eyes of the referee, that was not a foul. See it again here, Ron. Massaro's header. He's had a push off back here. I thought it was. I certainly thought it was from more from the naked eye than it is from that. But OK, Chuck will has certainly nudged Baggio well out there to the... To me, it looked, it looked a good favour for the header. He did pull you then on for the Nigeria. He's been a substitute at the earlier matches as well. But of course, quite a loss for them to lose the strength of Abukachi. Here's Baggio now, policed by Sati Ulisse. A lot before we up again in the Italian League next season. Ben Rivo now marauding down that left side into what's Masano! Well, that certainly looks the best chance of the score, working the ball wide. Sending, a, sending one of the full-backs, Musio Benarivo, flying in. And, I mean, that was a tremendous cross in there from uh, Benarivo. Massaro gets first to the ball and doesn't really stay, doesn't really stay over it. Well, that was more promising from the Italians. Still trailing, though, by a goal to nil. The winner is to be Spain in the quarter-finals. Paolo Maldini. At 26, already with 50, more than 50 international caps behind him. Surprisingly enough, you know, probably came to the uh, tournament with the reputation of the best left-back in the world. And for me, hasn't, I thought he, I didn't think he played well against Ireland. And certainly hasn't played over well in the tournament. I suppose you could say that about most of their side. They've certainly been disappointing, the Italians. And they've got a real fight on their hands here in the sunshine of Boston. Great celebrations here, of course, yesterday with Independence Day and the Boston Tea Party. Well, they're wrong to change that to champagne. Here's Boosie with time. Maybe moving to Palmer next season, Boosie. He says he doesn't know anything about it, but some speculation he's moving on from Torino. Dino Baggio is certainly going to be with Palmer, so they're going to have some side next season again. Now Rufai coming a long, long way out. Tremendous goalkeeping that from Rufai. Looks as if his defence was in trouble. No hesitation, takes command of the situation, cleans it up. And he's had to scamper back to his goal now. Albertini. Now Moussi. Beyond Baggio, Massaro in the middle. He'll challenge for anything, that man. So much determination about Massaro's play. And that, I believe, was a shot from Bertie. 
I think that also shows a little bit of a fraying at the nerves, doesn't it? Here we see the keeper. Look at that. That's brilliant, that. That's brilliant. No chance of a mix-up. No chance of everybody falling down and leaving the goal unguarded. Clean it off. I had seen beaten some speculation before the tournament as to whether Peter Rufai would be the number one choice. But he's had some exceptional games. I'm surprised the Nigerians don't try and feed uh, Amaniki a little bit more out on this left-hand side. He's staying right against the line in, in a position we would term an old-fashioned left winger. And they, they're, they're very, very keen to get the ball into the front players, into Yakini and Mokachi when he was on. And all of a sudden, you know, the lads might get a little bit disheartened out in the flank position. It's a foul up Masaru by Okichuku. Yeah, they are reckless, aren't they? I mean, they, they've, I think they've defended, defended smashing Okichuku and Nwandu. But they, they do tend to take uh, liberties with the referee. Some of the challenges are very, very vigorous. I remember Cameroon as well, the lad Massing doing exactly the same against England four years ago. Now, what comes to Signori and Roberto Baggio, Cutter up here. Signori, a little chippy out, Massaro couldn't quite make it. Maldini did. But not a very good chance. Sit a missed, sit a missed, Peter. Good little work free kick, cunning little ball around the corner from Signori. Cutting little ball, Maldini's found himself in all sorts of open space. Really should be tucking that home. And you know, that's when, if you're a Rigo Saki, then you start worrying a little bit. They've had enough chances, they've had a lot of situations, and yet they're trailing. Masaro, he won't be able to chase that one though. Time here for Emanalo. Certainly, Maldini had got beyond Emanalo for that header, and he's not been very accurate on set pieces. He scored some. Excellent goals for Milan. Couple two for Italy, Baldini. And you can see from his expression how disappointed he was. Here's Donadoni now. Donadoni shot. That'll be no problem for Rufai. Donadoni, who's come into the heart of the midfield in place of Dino Baggio. Another great servant to Clement Country. Donadoni of Milan. Okocha now, spreading it out wide. To Fenidi George. In goes Yakini. And Moniki. Lucy got it away. And Poyot says the referee. I think he would have broken the foul there. Lucy is back on his feet. But only just. Emanalo for Nigeria, leading by a goal to nil. Against the mighty Italian, Zedepoju to Okocha. Again, the Nigerian showing their strength. And Yakini unable to stretch for that one. Well, there's no danger if it gets to a physical battle, the Nigerians won't mind that at all. Four minutes of the first half to go. Signori, this push figure, and he was clearly illegally the tail back from his run. Made a Pujou, the substitute. And a yellow card. Made a Pujou from Racing Santander in Spain. Busi with the throw. Baggio. Arrigo Saki has been trying to play down the importance to Italy of Roberto Baggio, trying not to put too much pressure on him, but he certainly doesn't look the player who has won so many accolades in the past couple of years. The European and World Football of the Year. He has such a phenomenal goal-scoring record too in Italy. But remember, without a goal for his country since September. Well, the Nigerians and the neutrals in the crowd enjoying this attack here. Yakini. 
no question of the Nigerians being overawed here in any way. But here's Albertini now for the Italians. Duperti, who hasn't had too much joy down this right side. Costa Curta. Benaribo. Into the last two minutes of the first half. Daradoni. For Costa Curta. Strange, you know, he's been watching them. They've got a lot of players, the Italians, played in the so-called top club side in the world, if you like, in AC Milan. And yet people like that, uh, Costa Curta and Maldini even, Donadone, they seem reluctant to take the responsibility on them. I mean, we talk a lot about Baggio being the team leader, but there's enough of those that have played at a high level that should now be taking uh, the game by the scruff of the neck. But enough know-how, enough ability, you sometimes just have to question how much character they've got. This is Roberto Baggio. Brought over by Sati Olise. He does a good solid job in the midfield for the Nigerians. He's the ball around well, too. Signori. Again, looking for the determination of Massaro up front. But a noticeable thing was there. Massaro's the furthest player up the field. The ball's in there. He's in with a shout. Not one Italian player was breaking his, his neck to get up and support him. I was watching particularly Bertie, who for me has done nothing but stand out on this right hand side at the moment. I, you know, I don't quite see what his job in the side is at the moment. Manalo. That's where I was used to like when Donadoni got into those positions. He used, at least he used to get to the dead ball line and cut things back for the strikers. Well, they certainly had to lift their game in the second half, the Italians. Here's Signori now trying to do just that. Benarivo has made the run. The chip in, and again it's beyond. Got three Italian players there waiting in the middle. But that has been their main play. That's, that's their main route to success, I feel, Italy, is to keep Benarivo going up that left-hand side. They don't defend, the Nigerians don't defend the right-hand side too well. Egwavan's left a lot on his own, and uh, I think very often he's getting two against one, and the, the main threat has come in that area. Maldini, challenged by Yakini, and that'll be a free kick to the Italians. Two centre-halves don't fancy it at all, do they? The two centre-halves, um, Costa Kurt and Maldini, do not fancy the physical challenge today. Who would against Yakini? Donadoni now. Good work though by Abodiki. Struggling a bit, you know, physically, Abodiki. I mean, he's done his job. <laughs> he's given his side a great start, but he's, uh, he's he took a clash earlier with Musli, and I don't think he's recovered from it. Certainly hasn't shown his usual pace down the flank. Let's see what Edu Poju could do now. Yakini. Oh, shrugged despite the challenge there. Still, Yakini. He's got support too. George. Well, watch out. I think he's had a super game, him, you know. He's been outnumbered in midfield at the number 10 of Kachu, but he's kept the thing ticking over. His work on the ball has been as good as anybody's on the field. I think there was some surprise about the Nigerians that he wasn't chosen for the first couple of games. Indeed, uh, he was on his way back from injury, so that may have had something to do with it. Maybe not match fit, but he has been very impressive, certainly when he featured as a substitute in the last couple of games in the first phase. And there is the half-time whistle. Blown by referee Vizio Carter, and it's Abuniki's goal that divides the two teams. The Nigerians will be very satisfied with their afternoon's work so far. And the Italians have a lot to do. They've had chances, they haven't taken them. And Arrigo Saki will have to stir them up during the half-time interval. Nigeria leading through the goal from Aboniki on 27 minutes. We'll be back after the break. There are five key steps to tackling the coronavirus. Hands, elbow, face, distance and feel. Comece pelas mãos. Por favor, lave as mãos com frequência usando sabão ou gel desinfetante. With your elbows bent, please cover your nose and mouth if you sneeze or cough. If using tissues, dispose of them immediately. Respecto a la cara, 
Evita tocarte tus ojos, nariz y boca, así puedes evitar que el virus entre en tu cuerpo. Si vous vous sentez mal, restez chez vous et suivez scrupuleusement les consignes des autorités sanitaires. Yes, welcome back to the Foxborough Stadium where the teams are out now in preparation for the second half. Just looking round, what happens to Dido Baggio out for the second half and I would think in place of Donna Doni. Your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it gives them more physical presence, gives them somebody that can power from the middle of the field and that's what they've lacked. They've had a lot of what I call Tanner Ball players who are flipping the ball about to each other, but no real power player. So Nigeria then starting the second half, now attacking the goal to our right. Leading by Abenike's goal on 27 minutes. Just about the one real chance that they had. In contrast, the Italians have had three or four good opportunities, particularly the header from Maldini that went wide. But they haven't been able to capitalize on the creation of those chances. Here's Signori now. Dino Baggio then slotting into a midfield role in the center of that midfield area. In place of Donadoni. Dino Baggio has been carrying a slight injury. What's happened? We're wrong there. Dino Baggio's, Baggio's come on in place of uh, Bertie. Donadoni switched to that more familiar right wing role. And here he is now. Right That's on cue. This is where I think he can do damage out there. He's a cunning player when he gets in those wide areas. Baggio with the attempt to cross, he's got the corner. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's a bad shout either, I mean, Bertie was just, for me, a passenger in the first half. Well, we were certainly discussing at half-time, that was a possibility. Uh, Rigo Saki has made the switch, here's Donadoni now. So often a danger down the flanks, and there's Dino Baggio! Well, he really announced his entrance in style. I certainly felt against the Irish they were more dangerous, the Italians, when Dino got forward. Yeah. Good play there, started by Donadoni. Whips the ball in towards the near post. Now Baggio doing what an offensive midfield can do. Gets in, gets in front of the defender, just maybe glances the side post. In actual fact, having got there, you know, really should have tucked that one away, but given the benefit of the doubt, his first touch. But Edie George has given it away now to Roberto Baggio. Albertini. This is Donadoni. Down by Roberto Baggio to Dino Baggio. Massaro almost wriggling free. That's a pretty tight marking back there from the Nigerians. Yakini now. Abaniki on the chase. Costa Curta away. Certainly cooler now than it was around kickoff time. But it's still pretty warm out there. And Roberto Baggio. Ben Arrivo. He made some really good breaks down the left side. Signori. Yes, that's important, I think, that Signori and Ben Arrivo operate this left-hand side together. Because I think if they have a, a big weakness defensively in Nigeria, Egwavan, in the previous game for Luton, has looked suspicious and deficient against uh, good attacking play. And they've certainly had some moments in the first half, Italy, when they, they've actually produced some good movements down this side of the field, the left-hand side. Albertini, spotting the run of Musi. That's a lovely play by Okocha. Tell you, he's a good player. He does work the ball very, very well. Yekini. That's to go there with the challenge. And then back inside by Donadoni. Dino Baccio. Will be a Palmer player next season. Moving from Juventus. There we go, Saki. Looks a worried man. Well, he might be. Yeah, he's come to the tournament, hasn't he, with his team not playing well in the preparation games. Doesn't know his best team. His best player, Roberto Baggio, or his so called best player, hasn't in fact really produced the good yet. In fact, I think Dino Baggio looks a better player or a more effective player in the game to play. 
Dango Signori. Roberto Baccio is being shadowed everywhere by Sandy Olise, the 19-year-old Nigerian. And it's here for the foul on Signori. Now, the Italians have this free kick. But this is where Dino Baggio will have an added value as well, of course. He reinforced Maldini and Masato in the end. Dino Baggio, who scored the winning goal against Norway. Still letting, letting vitamin, the... still letting vitamin space for them, isn't it? But it's a Nigerian head that's first to the ball. Only as far there was Albertini. Yes, Musi now. Maldini has stayed up. Dino Baggio's in there as well. And it's a goal kick. The display of Musi. I think he's chasing Shadow, trying to get a free kick out of that. Samoniki colliding with him. And if anything, it looked a foul then by Musi. Free kick to Nigeria. And you were saying, Ron, about Saki not knowing his best team. He's picked over 70 players for the matches since he's taken charge after the last World Cup. Yeah, I think the best, the best national teams, you go through the history of the World Cup, the best national teams, the best teams have all been, have had a nucleus, haven't they, of eight players who virtually pick themselves match in and match out. Well, he has chopped and changed around Saki. He's very rarely played the same formation, and the same personnel. There's Roberto Baggio, fouled by Fadidi George. There's that recklessness coming in again, Pete. The Nigerians, you know, that's probably immaturity and experience playing at this level. Now, I would think they get a lot more leniency playing in, say, the African Cup or something like that. Now, Albertini may be lining this one up. Well, that's Westerhoff, the coach of the Nigerians, hoping that his defenders get it right this time. Maldini has placed himself on the edge of the wall. Here is Albertini. It was a tame shot by him, though. And then overhitting the chip through. That's three shots they've had. They, the free kicks they've taken from wide areas and put balls into the box haven't been bad, the Italians. But they've actually had quite a number of situations to have big boomers. You know, and they've got one or two reputed players that can hit the ball, and they haven't, you know, they've done nothing with them, in effect. And we're, we're led to believe this ball travels a lot faster and a lot farther than the normal ball. And they, they've wasted some good, some good chances. Well, I've certainly seen Albertini score from that kind of range in the Italian league. And it was a very weak effort. Dino Baggio. His goal late on against Portugal brought the Italians through to these World Cup finals. So they only just made it in the first place. They really haven't impressed so far. Not when you consider the players that they have at their disposal. Signori now. Roberto Baggio turning away from Alise to bring Musi into the play. Donadoni. Still Donadoni. Now Baggio. Can't get through again. Although the Nigerians looked a little uncomfortable. So well uh, the menace of Baggio. Give it all credit to Donadoni there. He's a cunning fox when he's out in that little right-hand position. Worked his way in and a great reverse pass Baggio should have done better with. Albertini. The Nigerians being pressed back in their own half. Here's Roberto Baggio. Yes, they're just, they're just cluttering on and hanging on in numbers now and knocking a lot of people to ground every time that something uh, menacing happens and there's the result of it. Alise, who well, actually thought he was going to miss this game, he got another caution in the first phase, but one of the two was wiped out, mistaken identity. You see, that's immaturity, you know, you've got to be patient. If you can't get at the ball, he's a touch unlucky, to be fair. I think the Italians got the ground as like a crumpled heap. In this competition, you just can't go and claim things that aren't there for you. Sooner or later, you feel the Italians must cash in on one of these free kicks. The Nigerians want to bring on... Oliha, can't do so at the moment though. Signore! Oh, just hold on! As Masaru, as all good strikers do, came pairing in, hoping to pick up the bits and pieces. I think you, 
Here's the free kick now. It's still not a great free kick. It's not a boomer. It's, it's gone through the wall. It's bounced two or three times. Keeper's made a right hash of it, really. But I, I see they're warming up a sub, um, Nigeria. That would look to me as if uh, a Mokani's coming up. Big time, here's Donadoni. So this is what he's got to do. He's got to weave. He's got to try and get it back into the box and play those cunning little balls. Almost got Dino Badger in there. I think he could get a penalty if he could take the defenders back into the box, you know. Well, the Italian continuing to dictate the pace, dictate the game. And Monique, he's got to come off, uh, Peter. That knock he's had first half, he's come back heavily stuck. Yeah. And he can hardly, he can hardly raise a gallop. And he certainly looks to be struggling. Here's Adipojo. The first half substitute. Okocha, who displays so much confidence on the ball. And Benarivo caught in trouble. He was lucky there to get a second bite at the cherry. Off goes Signori. Masaro has pulled out wide. With those orange boots that he favours. The aging workaholic is known in Italian football, Masaro. Here's Albertini now. He seems to win around a long time, but he's only in his early 20s. Already he's played in three championship sides for Milan. Manarivo. Signori. Tiny darting figure. Benedi George. Straight back though to Maldini. Still the Nigerians can't make their substitution. Here's Moussi now. Masaro. Roberto Baggio. Waiting in the middle. Here's Donadoni. And it'll fall for Fanini George. Oh, gotcha. This is the danger to the Italians. Yakini ahead of him. Fanini George. Good work by Okocha again. And now the flag's up for offside. I'll tell you what, he is. He is excellent in the little Okocha. He's going on your list, is he? Potential buys. Buys, oh, he's, he's an excellent player. Well, here's the switch now. Oliha, the number eight, is coming on to replace indeed Aboniki. Heavily strapped thigh. I wonder if he is going to end the day, though, as the hero of Nigeria, having scored the goal. That score separates the two teams. Thompson Oliha from the Africa Sports Club. Replacing Aboniki. Of Zamalek in Egypt, the African champions. Musi has to count Benarivo though. No foul. It's Benarivo for the Italians. Signori. A very careless pass that by Benarivo. Made a push to George. George with a shot, right, certainly cold, there was no real power on it. <laughs> the referee has scored for the foul on Baggio. Yellow card. Any hint of danger, and the Nigerians do tend to dive in with their tackles. Iwano with a shove then on Roberto Baggio. Yes, once again what we're saying, that's that's reckless again. Signore! Good block by Iwano. Well, he redeemed himself. He's done that three times actually, Iwano. He's made three great blocks, two in the first half and that one. Hey. And another free kick. It's Wadu, the Andalek defender. Get out. He saved his team on what, three, four occasions now. A 
Bonadoni with the cross. Saro couldn't quite get there. Up by Roberto Baggio. His namesake, Vino. Here's a foul by Emanalo. Roberto Baggio to Benarivo. Another attack free kick. Trouble is, when you keep getting these situations, Peter, you'll incur the referee's displeasure in a more dangerous area. Signori, riding the tackles. Cleon says the referee, and he's got to caution Signori for his theatrical behaviour. Well, I must say, in the climate of the game, with the free kicks that are flying about, that wouldn't have surprised me in the least if the referee hadn't have given a penalty for that. You know, they're running the risk now, Nigeria, with, with the reckless kicking and bumping at the back. Well, he certainly got past one tackle. And yeah. the referee decides that that was a dive from Signori. The referee is actually spot on with yeah. that. Yeah. Theatrical. I think <laughs> Signori's a little bit unfortunate to get booked. We're just making a reflex gesture too. So the Nigerians continue to play a risky game. And a pull again enjoying the skill of their team the Super Eagles of Nigeria still leading by a goal to nil from Amuniki on 27 minutes and I've got a free kick here awarded by the Mexican referee Rizio Kata Yakini has gone into the box and Edapuju flags up. No joy for Yakini. Who's been in the team for some 10 years or so now. Says he hasn't yet ruled out a possible move to Italy late on in his career. Ben Arrivo it was Edward Vat who started the run. Here's Fadidi George. And it goes you forward into the middle. And by Costa Cota. Now Masaru. For Busi. This is Donadoni. Got Busi away down the right, Roberto Baggio, the tackle again by Sunny Olise. George. Well, the heat certainly won't be bothering the Nigerians. I think Italy want to make another substitution. Hey, what a beauty. It's the one we've been waiting for all tournament, isn't it? Ah, Zola. How he hasn't been in the side since, since the word go, I don't know. Jafraco Zola, a mercurial player with Palmer, coming on for Signori. This is the man who is so adept at set pieces, he's got a better ratio of success from free kicks than any other player in Serie A in Italy. Something like a one in three success rate. Yeah, I think he's a brilliant little player. I don't think he'll be terribly happy if he has to play out here on the left-hand side. I think he's better if he can get wherever the action is. I think he'll be happy to get out there though, Ron. Yep, and we're certainly happy to see him. Because he is, a, whenever we've seen him play in the Italian league, he is an absolute star for me. Tip to be one of your players of the tournament, I think. So you're pleased to see him out there at last. Very much so. I mean, I must admit, even in the game against Palmer, against the Arsenal in the final, I thought he was one that showed a lot of character, even when things weren't going for his team. 
character is certainly something they'll need now. Baldini. Is Baggio. Albertini. And something they say was in the way again. Now Benarivo quickly goes down by Fadidi George. Albertini. Here's Zola. He's got great feet, this fella. Still Zola. Hoping to make a dramatic impact. And the shot squirts wide. I'll tell you what, I, th I feel Signore's a bit unlucky to be pulled off, you know? He's a goal scorer and whatever. I, I think Baggio, Roberto Baggio, might be a lucky player to stay on the field. I know it's hard to pull off your so-called best player, but there's times when maybe it's needed. Now, I think Zola for Baggio might have been a, a better, better bet in terms of a team balance. The shot there going wide from Donadoni. And he took Baggio off, of course, against the Norwegians. But this time it's Signore who has been replaced. And Berti didn't come out for the second half. A well, clumsy clearance then by Unwaru. But the Nigerians haven't been as vulnerable at the back as we thought they might have been. Now, certainly this half as well, whether it's Italy forcing them back or whether they've said, hey, you've got to get two to beat us. We'll sit here, we'll, we'll block off space. We'll try and check off things, and all right, they've lived they've lived on the sword edge a little bit with uh, some of the free kicks they've given away. Well, they are still protecting this one goal lead. They've also got a lot more compact in midfield since so Hall has come on in the number eight. It's given them that extra number in there. A free kick now then to Nigeria, who top their group, of course, in the qualifying rounds with Argentina. Stepping back into third place, Bulgaria second. All thanks to Abakachi's late goal against Greece. And that's given away carelessly then by Sati Ulisse. Rossi. Almost halfway through the second half. Still, the Italians have it all to do. Rossi's cross, it goes Vassaro very strongly. The resident defending though again by the Nigerians. George, turned back into Dino Baggio. An obstruction then on Benarivo by Egwavan. But understandably, a bit of frustration beginning to creep into the Italian play. This will be the signal to set up Maldini again. Just making his arrival in the box now. Solo with the kick. Too easily dealt with, though. George. Off goes Atmana Kocha again. And showing some delightful skills. But this time he's outmaneuvered. Off goes Yakini now. Shadow by Costa Curta. Want oh, to keep that in play? No shots for Zola in the air. Yeah, you've also got to give Nigeria a lot of credit. You know they've had to play for a long period of the game without their two fastest forwards, Emaniki and Amokachi. Asaro. You know, and they've virtually had to play with Yakini on his own as a lone raider, and he's not the quickest in the world. So they've lost a fair amount of penetration from the, with those two players going up. Zola will take the free kick. This is he on the ball now. Okocha. Almost lazily away to this near side now to Ida Poju. I tell you what, watching the number 10 of Kachu, you could do a magic little montage, you know, of skills that he's produced today. Passes, work rate, and some great little, some great areas again. He's, he's, I could watch him, he's one of the best players I've seen in the tournament. Here's a Kachu again. Teasing the Italians, but he's given it back now to Zola. 
Baggio. Sola. Massaro away to his left. Here's Massaro now. The shot took a couple of deflections. Massaro has kept it again. Oh, a few Nigerian half skipped a beat there. Oh, it comes to a confrontation in the physical stage. There's no way the Nigerians will back down. Massaro. Zola. Fought but not foul by George. In fact, that's the referee right on the spot. And he saw nothing wrong there. Albertini, still most of the play in the Nigerian half. Dino Baggio. Donadoni. Roberto Baggio trying to shake off his marker. Here's Maldini. White to Benaribo. Massaro. It's well one back by Benaribo. And eventually over the line for a Nigerian throw. Yes, you can sense the Italian frustration. Now they're getting it in wide areas and they're just tossing it in the box. And the Nigerians are keeping a cluster of three defenders right in there. And invariably, they're dominating it with size. I still think Italy's best way is to work the ball into the box. Look for little give and goes inside the box and hope that they get a penalty. Hope that one of the Nigerians gets reckless. Now, Fanini George. Yakini. Donadoni losing out, helped out though by Albertini. Still the team coached by the Dutchman, Clemens Westerhoff. And his one goal advantage, it looks a slender lead. It looks a big lead if you're sitting in the Italian bench at the moment. I bet. Because like you say, you get those sort of games where they've had good chances, they haven't tucked them away, and you do begin to wonder whether it's one of those fateful days. They can't turn this round, the Italians. And we're getting the rotten fruit out back in Rome and Milan and Turin, where so much is expected of the national side. Yakini. Still Yakini. Masaro is the target, along with Donadoni, but it's Baggio now. Albertini into the path of Musi. Dino Baggio. Oliha with the tackle. Now Masaro. Still working tirelessly for the Italians, Masaro. Maldini to Albertini. Now Donadoni, a big rock set of the Nigerians. Massaro to Donadoni. Again, they charge down the shot. Maldini. Frustration etched on the brow of Donadoni. Hugo Saki can't keep still there now. He's prancing up and down the touchline, waving, gesticulating. Complaining. His job is very much on the line. The Italians will not tolerate any kind of failure. And there's no other way to view this if they go out. Benarivo. Just over 15 minutes to go. Dino Baggio. Now for Roberto Baggio. With Donadoni. Here's Dino again. Faced by Nwadu, appeals for a penalty, and again the referee says no, play on. Well, the Italians don't like it, certainly those in the crowd. I've got a feeling you might have been entitled to an indirect free kick though, there, Dino Baggio. No question he was blocked off his, his turn, it, it was awkward for Nuano, the defender, but he got himself too tight. Busi. Just to remind you, if it should be level at the end of the 90 minutes, they'll play extra time, then it'll be penalties needed. 
they still can't settle it. But for the moment, the Nigerians continue to have the upper hand, at least in terms of the scoreline, even if the Italians are having most of the possession. Oliha. So here it is again, Ron. Yeah, he's not magged him. Yep. Now, to be fair, I said it was a bit awkward, but I think he's definitely blocked him off. It's not a penalty because it's not an intentional one. But I think he's entitled to an obstruction there. Because if he doesn't go to ground, he's in a great position. He's certainly clumsy. Here's Egwavan now. Wide of him for Needy George. Oh, a neat piece of skill there to deceive Benarivo. Still George. They have enormous talent, these Nigerians. And they prove they can live in this kind of company. Zola. Now is that obstruction? Again, the referee just waving aside Italian protests. Red card for Zola. Kicking out at Equivar. Oh, the Nigerians there can hardly uh, contain their delight at seeing the Italians produce the 10 men. What did you make of that, Ron? You're Man of the tournament, not going to play anymore. Well, he's gone past. He definitely thinks he's been handed up. Zola's made a meal of it. Now, it's here where the problem starts. You know, he's pumped up. He's gone aggressively for the ball. I don't think that in itself is going to be it. I think it's Malvin. He, I think it doesn't look... He looks as if he's sent him out for lunging for the ball. Now, he's not entitled to send him off for that. Not in my book. If he's turned around and bad mouth the referee, yes, he goes. Well, he showed his frustration. There's no two ways about that. He can't accept the decision. I didn't think it looked that bad. No, I think what's made it worse is because he's fired up at uh, not getting the first decision his way. He's turned, he lunges across, but he doesn't lunge, he doesn't make any contact at all with his feet, with the defender. In actual fact, it's quite a good challenge, it's quite a good... But I think it's more the intent, the referee thinks he's come over to get his own back on him sort of thing. Oh, sorry, I can't see that one. No, not at all. He's gone for the ball. Not at all. He went for the ball, and if he caught him at all, it certainly was nothing like as bad as Egwavan was making out. Surely. But I think the proof will be if Egwavan comes back. Well, the Italian fans voicing their disapproval. And as if their job wasn't hard enough already, they now have an even bigger mountain to climb. Yakini buckling defenders aside, he can't get through though. As I say, sometimes you've had the feeling from the word go that is it one of those days. Roberto Baccio linking up with Massaro. Here's a chance, maybe. No, a foot's in again. Okachuku. That was a brilliant ball from Baggio. That's possibly the best he's produced in the tournament. Good movement by Massaro. Clever ball down the side, and he's very unfortunate enough to get a strike and goal there. Egwavan has come back on. Oh, we're seeing here Massaro's there's a, effort. There's a shot. <laughs> Not early with the corner. Away for another one. But, I mean, it's not the first time in the tournament that the Italians have been in this situation, is it? Man off, having to climb mountains. Now they're going to have to show more character than, than possibly they've ever done. Paliuka, of course, sent off against the Norwegians. I think what I didn't like either, Rob, was the way they celebrated the player being sent off. Elise was obviously went across the tail of You've got a man sent off. Maldini put directly his header onto the target, though. I'm sure they are relishing the fact that the Italians have lost a man, but I didn't like to see that. Well, they have just over ten minutes now to save the game, the Italians. Off goes Yakini, the Kaduna ball. He's come a long way since he used to kick oranges around the streets of Kaduna. Okacha. Again, super skill by him. No offside, George. Still at the far post. Well, the Italians have got away with it, but once again, Okocha threatened to be there on doing that. And that'll be no problem for Marco Gianni. 
Will Maracocha again, Rob? Oh, I think he's been the man of the match. I think he's had a tremendous game. Certainly showed no lack of confidence. I mean, when you, when you consider the, the stage he's playing on, and even from the word go, he was controlling the ball, doing tricks, playing against some of the so-called best players in the world. Nigeria still lead. The three times world champions Italy by a goal to nil. Amodiki on 27 minutes. I wonder now, is that going to prove enough to knock out the Italians? Donadoni on to Baggio. And if ever the Italians need a piece of his magic now, this is surely it. Nuaru. Hounded by Massaro. Baggio maybe with a spot of crap. He has been nursing this ankle injury, which has certainly hindered him. There's no two ways about that. Towards the end of the Italian season, he was struggling. The pace going on here with Iacchini. Baggio is still down. Iacchini, well, they've held him back. That could well be a sending off. It's only a yellow card for Baldini. He'll be relieved. No, I don't believe that. That is a definite well, sending off. He's through on goal. That's a definite sending off. Yakini, who I didn't think could run like that, hasn't suggested it all afternoon. Has turned, he's powered the ball, his next step's going to take him one-on-one -on, -one on the keeper. And he's, he's, he's brought him to the ground there. He's jostled him to the ground there. That is a definite sending off. Zola must be sitting there somewhere in the stadium thinking, what the hell's the game about? Paolo Maldini is a very lucky man to still be on the field. Okocha taking charge of the free kick. Another goal now, and surely Italy will be out of the competition. Chip through, good save though by Matajiani. From Okocha. Didn't really test it there. Round the wall, okay, but Matajiani in the right place. Lucy for Donadoni. We know Baggio's in the box. It's a foul by the Italian. Massaro protesting. Certainly Baggio looked to do everything right, Dino Baggio, there apart from score. Force floated in, he's pulled, he's pulled on the defender. At some time he must make contact with the defender, but I think he's climbed above him. I think he's been physically strong and held his body strength a lot more than the Nigerian defender. What was interesting again there, Masara starts arguing with the referee. I would have thought that was fatal on a day like this. Eight minutes to go. The Wano for Nigeria. The African champions. Still leading by one goal to nil. They can't afford to relax, but the Italians they're not really creating too many chances for all their possession. Albertini trying to get something going for them now. But he's given it away to Emanalo. Pass to Kurta to hook it back beyond Yakini. I think if Yakini had done that a few more times in the game, because he's had a lot of good situations where he's been 1v1 against the last defender, but has shown a reluctance to run on with it. I think if it had shown him that a lot more. I think Nigeria might have been even more in the box seat. Donadoni. There they are, they get that cluster of defenders. Any sign of threat to them now. They get that cluster of defenders up right in the heart of the defence around the penalty spot. And they've got the heads on things, they've blocked up. There's been three great blocks by the sweep of Uwandu. Marigo Saki has called them supermen, the Nigerian players, and they certainly have enormous stretch. The strength was touched on there by Baggio, which comes to nothing. Better Revo now. And Wadu, and he can let it drop through to his goalkeeper, Fudo Rufai. And it's got to start sometime. There's got to be a new winner of the World Cup, and I wonder if it continues like this, how, how much they'll be fancied tomorrow, Nigeria, if they see this one off. And it was a game that no one really could forecast with any degree of certainty. The Italians haven't been playing well. No, it's not a good Italian side, we have to say that. He's got some good players, but as a team, it's not a good, it's not a good side. Here's but George. It's a side without a great cutting edge, I think. Here's Pujo. Costa Kurta 
with a foot firmly in, and Massaro losing his control. To be the snow of the Italians here. Yekini. And out of play off Moussi. Just over five minutes left. The Italians in serious danger now of going out of the World Cup. Out here is Fanidi George. Egwavan inside him. Still Egwavan. Trying to pull it back for Yakini. Now, who did that come off? It's a corner. Off Baldini. The Italians down to 10 men. And chasing this lead that the Nigerians have through Amadiki's first half goal. The Nigerians just throwing three men into the box. One of them is Yakini. Emanalo. On by Olise. But now the Nigerians will have to funnel back. And soak up maybe five minutes or so of pressure from the Italians. Across, just pull off, will find, able to watch it sail past as Roberto Baggio came in. I think we've been quite critical of the goalkeepers in this tournament, Rob, but uh, Rufai has let nobody down, has he? No, certainly today. He's, he's had one or two moments when he's parried things, and, and sometimes keepers can be lucky. He's, he's parried two that may on another day have fallen into the path of strikers and been wrapped past him, and it's a goal. And then he, he, he's, the, he's the hard carrier, if you like. He takes the stick. Uh, but today he's loaded his luck, and that decisive, that decisive interception in the first half was a big moment for him. But he hasn't really had to make many saves, has he? He's had to field a few long shots from free kicks in that. It's been pressure without penetration from the Italians. Which I think sums their team up. I don't think, as I say, I don't think they've got that great cutting edge. And a nice few neat and tidy players. And that was a foul then by Albertini. Just calm it down now. And with the message through from the bench, I'm sure, from Clements Westerhoff. Bits. He's not universally popular among the Nigerian people and among the Nigerian officials, but if he takes them through to the quarter-finals, well, he'll be a hero. He'll certainly be a lot more popular than Sachi, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okocha. He does love a dribble. He, does. he could do some confidence, Okocha, couldn't he? Oh. And he's only 20 years old, Okocha. He has so much to offer the game. Here's Olia now. Less than three minutes to go, and a question of the time added on by the Mexican referee. And there will be some. No challenge there from Yakini. Maldini. Costa Curta. To Donadoni. Roberto Baggio has made the run here. As ever, Sunday Lucy has gone with him. Almost gave it away. And maybe with a bit of an experience though, he's just wax it away into touch. I tell you what, he'll get, he'll get plenty of flack if the scoreline stays like this. Very good start. But I just wonder how many of those players, I mean, you look at the likes of Maldini, Casta Curtin, and people like that. They are big players. Now, Busi, is he going to get through here? Baggio! It's 1-1, and Roberto Baggio, the European and World Football of the Year, has at last lived up to his reputation. Oh, what relief for the Italians. Moussi's run, and Roberto Baggio clinically into the corner. Yeah, well, he, he's, he's, had a, he's had a terrible tournament, nothing's happened for him, and right at the moment of truth. I mean, in my book, he shouldn't be on the field still. I think he's had injury problems, he shouldn't be on the field still. I would have had Zola, well, Zola's obviously up for other reasons now. But I suppose that's why you're a great player. 
you make it happen when you when you need to. Certainly never looked on, did it? The equaliser for me never looked on. Well, all around me now, the Italian fans are celebrating wildly with their waving flags. And he's a hero again, Roberto Baggio. His first goal since late last year for the Italians. And it's brought them back level. And now less than a minute to go. But here's Fidini George pursuing the ball through. Extra time if it stays this way now for the last minute or so. Maybe a bit more from the referee to add on. And this will be a test of character for the Nigerians now. Off goes Dino Baggio. Maybe the Italians can still finish it. Asaro's in the middle. Foul by Sunday Ulisse. They've postponed the hanging. And there is such a noise now from the Italians. And what are making themselves heard wrong? What price a winner here. Just slipping the game now, the fake weights turn round. Because there are those inviting spaces we've been talking about. Quality of the ball, somebody runs across the near post, there's acres for them. That goes cross. Well, they've got it away. Now he should really be setting those, he's flipping it into the bunch there. He should be setting those free kicks off on a, on a bend in line with the keeper. Donadoni, looking to run at this Nigerian defence, there's Masaru, but desperately away. We're into injury time. Nigeria won, Italy won. And it's drama now right to the last, in terms of the 90 minutes anyway. All the pressure now coming from the Italians. We'll, of course, be staying with extra time. I'm just going to go to that. And who, may, who knows, maybe the extra suspense and penalties as well. I've never won yet in these World Cup finals. Olissier for Nigeria. I suppose you have to wonder if they do have another goal in them. Well, the Italians will certainly feel they have, but not like that from Massaro. A minute and a half into stoppage time. And you can sense all around the ground the Italian relief. They were so close to going out. But I think my money will be on them now, Rob. Yeah, but don't forget they've got an extra half an hour. They're down to ten men. They've had to work hard to get back in the game. Who knows? Well, that's the end of the 90 minutes. It will be extra time. We hope you'll stay with us. Italy won, Nigeria won. We'll be back after a short break. The Italians are going to kick off. Kicking from left to right now, redeemed by that late, late goal from Roberto Baggio, his 20th in international football. And what a crucial one for the Italians. Fabio lining up for the kickoff with Daniele Massaro. Here's Donadoni. Nigerians, remember, without Abu Kachi, without Abu Niki, who both had to go off injured. So some of their men are front has been taken away from them. I'll tell you, we'll be lucky, won't we? The Spanish group. Spanish team will be sitting there, Clemente and so forth. Extra time. They've had a couple of days extra to recover, full week. You know, these have got to get themselves up. The winners of these have got to get themselves up again for a big game at the weekend. It's a very fair point. Well, here's Donadoni now. That's a tackle of the Concha. But not Hamanalo. Olissier. Holy Hart. And a Pojo. Well, at least will be fresher than some, having come on as a substitute. All the outfield players have now been used. 
And the Italians, of course, having one of theirs, Zola sent off. Very harshly in my book. Oh, that's really history now. Disgraceful decision now. Well, we've seen some warranted sending offs, and uh, one or two that I think are a bit dubious. Badger. Maldini, who many will feel should have been sent off when he pulled down Yakini late in the second half. But was only given a yellow card. I wonder whether the Italian mentality might be okay. We'll stay with what we've got, take it into penalties because we know we'll beat you on penalties. <laughs> Certainly, there are sides in the past that have done that. You know, I used to think the Eastern Bloc team. In the old days, the old Romanians and people like that, they would certainly have been, been looking for that. Well, here's Boussi now. Yeah, I reckon the Argentines will have had that in mind. Uh, the World Cup final four years ago against the Germans. Free kick to Italy. Now on Massaro. I fancy they might just roll this one square to Albertini. He's, he's, he's in acres of space. He's just been spotted now. Here's Roberto Baggio. Looking for Dino Baggio. Away off Egova for the corner. Great header that. There were two coming in at the back of him. Then I thought he was in real trouble, Egovina. Dino Baggio will stay in there. Maldini forward from the back. Rufai organising the troops ahead of him. Donadoni with the corner. And the header, just, just wide from Dino Baggio. He's a danger on these free kicks and corners. I must admit, when he made contact with that, I thought that was going to finish up right at the bottom of the net. He's a ball, nice curly ball. He gets across the defender, gets in front of the defender here, and gets plenty on it. He'll have, think, he'll have thought when he made contact there that that was going to finish up inside the net. Emanalo. Holding up. Now Ulisse. Only have again, on for Yakini. And that was a really alert piece of goalkeeping then by Marco Gianni. As Yakini went marauding through. Well, that's a lovely slip ball through. Yakini's on the end of it. I thought then he was just going to go to ground and try and hook it over the keeper. Keeper's come very, very brave and made a great stop. And he's had the, he's had the rub of the green where he's just rebounded back into Yakini, who doesn't quite realise where he is. So the Nigerians showing they still have plenty of attacking potential. This is Albertini with Costa Corta. Certainly in this heat, the pace has dropped. Yeah, I think the Italians will try and keep it that way as well. I think they'll yeah. try and keep it a fairly low tempo, pass, pass, pass. And then when they see the move on, if they see uh, Baggio or Massaro make a spinning run up front, then they'll stick it in there. I think they'll, they'll try and conserve energy as much as possible. Albertini. Here's Baggio. With Costa Corta. Moussi down here trying to uh, receive some water, some refreshment. In his efforts to last the pace. Which for the moment is walking pace. I'm a bit surprised the Nigerians don't try and get after them up the pace, you know. With the extra man, they really ought to be trying to pressurise the game and play the last half an hour or so at a higher tempo. Played off by Roberto Baggio. But just too long for Massaro. Fabulous atmosphere now inside the stadium as the Mexican wave breaks out yet again. What I was trying to figure when they were winning Nigeria, where all of a sudden those Nigerian supporters came from. I thought we'd only got about 200 in the stadium. Yes, a lot of them had trouble getting visas, but uh, those that are here are certainly making, many, making plenty of noise. They've got cheerleaders with them. Okocha, who will certainly have delighted his fans back home. 
as well as his club mates, I would imagine, and Eintracht Frankfurt, too, in Germany. Now, Massaro. Okechukwu. And covered the run, though. The first game in the World Cup Finals to go into extra time. Donadoni with Albertini. Costa Curta. Movement from Donadoni. Going from Emanalo. And support from Albertini. Dino Badger. Ben Arrivo. And the cross was wasted. Yeah, I think he was in two minds there. He wanted to cut the ball back. He wanted to cut it back to midfield players coming on and nobody had quite been able to make up the ground. In the end, so he's looking up, he wants to really lay this back into somebody's run. In the end, he just tries to play a general direction ball and doesn't get round the doesn't get round it at all. But that was actually at the end of a brilliant build up from uh, Italy. Ococcia. I think to link up with Yakini. And he's been penalised for a spot of pushing that on Baldini. Shini Yakini. The African Footballer of the Year. Costa Corta to Maldini. Dino Banjo made the run, but to no avail. And obviously now the players are feeling the heat. We're feeling it up in the, uh, the media boxes here, so I'm sure they are down on the pitch. Olia. Bikini in the middle. Here's Okocha. Now Fanini George for Egelvan. And that has almost struck the windows of the building right up high in the stand away to our left. Well, that was a waste of a great position. I mean, the Nigerians have worked the ball very, very well. It's never Fini scored. Fendi George has <laughs> cut up a lovely ball. Craig won. Look what he's done with that. Look at that. I mean, he, he should really. He's either going to shoot a goal better than that, take it out of his feet, or, or just curl it to the back stick and say, go on, Yakini, battle on that one. I'm just going to say he's never scored for uh, Nigeria. He won't like that. Masaru, 33 years old, but still going strong, Masaru. Here's Dino Baggio. Roberto, hoping to open up some space ahead of him. Benarivo out wide. Now Roberto Baggio in for Benarivo. Is that a push? It's a penalty! No hesitation at all from the Mexican referee. A push on Benarivo. Yeah, well, that's been coming all match. That's some cute play from Benarivo and Roberto Baggio as a result of that. But, I mean, for me, as soon as the defender makes the lunge here, that reckless thing again by that lad, I mean, I don't think he's a good defender, Egwapen. I mean, brilliant, brilliant play there by uh, all credit to Baggio and Benarivo. Egwavan, it was certainly an untidy lunge there at Benaribo, who has caused all kinds of problems when he's made those sorties in and around the penalty box down the left side. You see the unnecessary thing about that's recklessness in defence, yeah. and to be fair, that's something they'll learn by playing in more and more of these tournaments. But, I mean, he, he got a fellow defender there coming to tidy the situation up, possibly. Now, look, here we go again. See? He's really, Benarivo's still got plenty to do there. Nuano's well in control of the situation. Well, Roberto Baggio, who scored the goal, to take us into extra time, will take the kick for the Italians. He's been pacing up and down, trying to compose himself. 
outside the 18-yard box. Well, to a certain extent, he's been the villain for the Italians in the World Cup until this game today. They've been so disappointed with his displays, albeit with an Achilles heel injury. But now he has the chance, maybe to take his team through to the quarter-finals. Ten minutes into the first period of extra time. Baggio against Rufai. It's a goal from Roberto Baggio and the Italians have come from behind to take the lead. Thanks to their most gifted player. A perfectly executed penalty kick. And maybe now, maybe we'll see a few Nigerian heads drop. Yeah, that's going nowhere but in the net. Just hits the side of the post, tickles in, pick that one out. And once again, they've flown in the face of adversity, the Italians. A goal down, down to ten men. They battle back. And Roberto Baggio, with two goals now, has edged them ahead. Leo for Nigeria. How will they respond now? Adepojo. I'll tell you how they've got to respond, Peter. They've got to try and up the tempo of it. They've, they've, since extra time started, they've given the impression that they wanted it to go to penalties. I mean, in, in, in extra time, in effect, it's been all Italy. Emanalo. Emanalo's got away from Costa Corta. Yakini! Just in front of the line, away by Dino Baggio. Magnificent defending by him. Yakini, so close to equalising. Oh, Yakini should have swallowed that one, shouldn't he? He did. Oh, he hasn't reacted too well to the first cross. It's bad defending here from Costa Curta. It's not convincing. Amalaro picks out a great ball across the box, and really, Yakini, he should really have been wrapping that home. Even there. He, should have thrown his body, everything, and Dino Baggio should never have had the opportunity to clear that one. Well, now Marco Gianni has bowled the ball into touch to enable Costa Curta to receive some attention. But now he's, he's going to soldier on. Can't afford to lose him as well. Now the Nigerians kick to extend Marco Gianni and those Italian defenders. Here's Masaru back helping out. Scatbrick figure of Danarivo, the man who was brought down for the penalty. Baggio taking over, he's got Massaro away to his left. Baggio's on a hat trick. Massaro and Baggio. You said the key words, then he was on a hat trick. I think if you think it'd been no score, he'd have just eased the ball into the run of Massaro. He's got two in the bag, he wants a third one in a World Cup match. This is George now, the Nigerians bouncing straight back. I think he froze when I said hat trick, though. Uh, Ron. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got round, he's even, even on the second fight, he's got round the ball well, and the keeper, to be fair, has covered it. But he could have let that one run onto Massaro, who's in a great position. Well, that could have glitched it for the Italians, but as it is, they have some defending to do now. Olia. Far too close, though, to Marco Gianni. So almost at the end of the first period of extra time. Italy 2, Nigeria 1. Two goals from Roberto Baggio to overcome the first half strike from Abaduki. But if you have tuned in late, the Italians are down to 10 men having had Zola set off. Not too long after he'd come on as a substitute. Ali up. Out wide to George. Benarivo got it away, and Baggio can't control it. Okichukwu to Emanalo, and that's the end of the first half of extra time. So the Italians have assumed control now. Let's get the views of the two lads in the studio, Don Halloway Wilkins. Don, can you see any way back to Nigeria now? Well, Peter, all the, they've, got a, they, they've got nothing to lose, have they? Now, really, they've got to throw everybody forward. I mean, they have got the extra man. Why they never started off extra time a little bit more positively, we don't know. 
Uh, but they've got to get players up with Yakini. I mean, he is giving them problems occasionally. Yeah, he's big, he's clumsy at times, but the ball isn't around that box, and yet they won't pl get players forward, Nigeria. They've got to learn to do it, and it's their only way back into this game. Ray Wilkins, you've seen a lot, of course, of the Italians. Uh, they left it very, very late, didn't they? But do you feel they're in, in control now? Well, I thought they were in control for the majority of the game, Peter, and it really is the, the classic Italian scenario, isn't it? They'll, they'll defend very well, hopefully. I'd love to see them go through. Um, but they've got a very, very punishing 15 minutes in front of them. But uh, I'm sure they have the players that have seen this situation many times before, and I'm sure they'll come through. OK, well, we're almost ready then for the second period of extra time. The Italians are man short, but very high on confidence now. Thanks to the two strikes from Roberto Baggio. The Nigerians, too, start the second period. Any thoughts here, Ron? No, I mean, the key word is extra man. <laughs> they've got to get forward. I mean, we've just seen the only chance, or the best chance they've had in, in this half is when the left back and Manalo push forward. Now, I haven't seen him push forward at all in the course of the game. Shot from Akosha. Right, though, into the midriff of Luca Marcaggiari. I mean, they've actually disappointed me in terms of attitude. I thought they slung the game away in the first period. You know, just before uh, Baggio got the equaliser, I thought they were well in control of the game and didn't go for the throat. But since then, I, I think they've been very disappointed. Now, there's an area. This, this guy might as well keep bombing on and on now. Well, they've got to go for the jugular now, that's for sure. Will he stay? Far too ambitious, though. It's a pretty tired shot, too. I'm also a little bit surprised why Findy George, when he's received good possession, hasn't really... A, hasn't really attacked uh, Benarivo. He's, he's tended to come across the field instead of when he's getting 1v1 in the last third, trying to take him on and get more to the dead ball line. Here's Donadoni. Bitter disappointment, of course, back in Italy when they went out of the last World Cup finals to Argentina. And there'll be equal despair if they don't survive this game. But they are now in the driving seat. Westerhoff trying to wind his team up. This is Okocha to Egwavan. Whose rash tackle on Benarivo enabled Baggio to give his team the lead. Ada Poju now trying to force his way through. The flag's up for offside. I don't think the referee spotted it. But as the Italians had the ball anyway, it didn't matter and they've got the free kick. Well, they have plenty to cheer about, and so much relief for them. Benarivo, blocked by Egwavan. But the referee decides it was a fair challenge. That Egwavan does like blocking people. <laughs> it's, it's ironic that, you know, he's given the penalty away about the situation with Zola. So that was a fair challenge on the manager of Aston Villa. Eda Poju. Very much, Jamie, you might. <laughs> Fadidi George trying to curl one into the path of two players there, two of his teammates in the box, and they're making forward runs now, trying to support. I think that may have been half of it by Albertini. It's certainly a free kick to Nigeria. The Italians pulling everybody back. Ikachuku, the half of five, has gone up. Keening in there too, of course. Another poor free kick. I mean, that is, the quality of set plays have been very, very poor in this game. For the delivery. Can they deliver a decent cross this time? And it pulls you. Now there's some pushing. Spotted by the eagle-eyed referee. Free kick to Italy. And a few more moments of respite for them. They kept going, the Italians kept hoping for something to come their way, and it finally did for Roberto Baggio. And now the game has turned around. This is Nwaru to Alise. Ahead of him, Egwavan and Fanini George. This is Egwavan. 
George. Police. George now maybe with a chance to cross it in. He's got a balloon to contend with as well. But he's going to kick that for a moment. Maldini sternly into the challenge. The test now of the Italians resolve at the back. Baggio down for Benarivo, but still the Nigerians pressing. Okachukwu to Okocha. Emanaro. Head of Pujo in the middle, away though by Maldini. The Italians don't know that content to sit back with a having to at the moment. And certainly there are players struggling out there. And that's Moussi, is it down? Bit of a miss kick by Benarivo. George is offside though. Yes, I think for these closing minutes, as much as possible, the Nigerians have got to try and get uh, George some good position out on the right-hand side and say, go on, attack the defence, get past the last man and scalp it in there. They've looked more dangerous, or their main threats have come when they've got to those positions. Give you keenly the sort of delivery he thrives on, somewhere he can go and impose himself. Well, Moussi will have to go off for further treatment. If it is here, it's hard to see through that crowd of players. As for the moment, they're down to nine men. The Italians just trying to conserve their energy now. As they endeavour to reach the quarter-final, back here in this stadium against Spain. And that certainly won't be easy. Maldini with the free-kick. Finding Roberto Baggio. No sign yet of Lucy coming back on. And Massaro's got a right back for the time being. I think at the moment they'll all play where they fancy. They'll all, they'll all get behind the ball when it's necessary. And whoever gets it in the forward position, be it Baggio, be it Benavero, they'll just have to hang on to the ball for grim death. Well, they came through the first phase by the skin of their teeth. Albertini now. I must confess, when Albertini went out to that ball, I thought there was every chance of getting pulled down for a penalty again. Well, he's fetched it. Dino Baggio's in there, and Massaro, who'd arrived as well. he come hearing up from the back, Massaro. And it was a tired pass by Dino Baggio. Off goes Giacchini now. Now, he's sure to turn a pace here. This, can he get at the defence now? Costa Curtin, now he's letting them all get back behind the ball. That's what he's got to do. He's got to carry it and get at them quickly. And he allowed Donadoni to get his tackle in. The Italians looking absolutely exhausted. Okocha. Only nine of them out there at the moment still. Well, this is effortless, isn't it? Little or no back lift, a long way of doing plenty through the air. And they've still got eight minutes or so to hang on. Maldini. Here's Roberto Baggio. Benarivo, he's away. And now he will have to scurry back to help out what might be a Beluga defence without him. Lucy is back on, but I'm sure by no means recovered. The number eight for the Italians, he's lived back on. Just to get another body out there. Okocha, riding the tackles. And that turned into Dino Baggio. And it's a free kick to Italy. Well, he can hardly walk, Moussi. Let alone run. But he'll stay out there now. And the Italians inch their way towards the quarter-final. Marco Giardi plucking out of the air, the head of Yukini. Here's Massaro. Not a dirty. There's not too much to port for it. Still not a dirty. Albertini. He'll go all the way back to Massaro. 
Six minutes or so remaining. Here's Misano. What a credit he has been to his team. Baggio in the middle, trying to pull away from the defender. And Egelvan able to make the interception. Rolled on by Lise to Nuanu. And the Nigerians have got to take the game to Italy now. Well, he's pushed out right out from the liberal position, hasn't he? Nuanu, he's pushed up into a semi midfield attacking position. Here is Nuanu. Lise. And the Italians have to include anywhere, but they found the sorrow. Now Baggio. Benarimo. This little fellow's done some work, hasn't he? Ben Arriba, this left flank. He'll just take it away to the corner now. If he can't go anywhere, he'll eat up the time. That's it, free kick, no hurry. Attacking half of the field. They're masters of that, the Italians. There are five minutes left for the Italians to hold on. They have only ten men out there, and one of those moves who can hardly move. Here's Massaro. That won't be a penalty. Still, he's prepared to fight on for it. But away come Nigeria. Fenini George. Edith Pojo. This is Olise. Now George. Olise has made the run. But again, good work by the Italians, initially from Ben Arrivo. And the referee has given the Italians a free kick. For all the problems they've had, you know, through the tournament, the key player not playing well until he, until he equalises, all of a sudden, there's a, there seems a new belief about the Italians, isn't there? I mean, just that little incident there emphasised it. As soon as it went to Findy George, four Italians clustered round him to win the ball back. As you said earlier on, Ron, Javier Clemente, the coach of Spain, will be rubbing his hands at this. Oh, he'll be, he'll be in cartwheels. Especially if another Italian player got sent off or something. Up towards Massaro. Now that Trabaccio, no. It goes Busi. No by Emanalo. Not by Elise to Anapojo. Now Kocha. Dikini is waiting in the middle. And Apojo trying to touch it off to it. He's straight on it back again. Duano. The Italians trying to button down the hatches, but the Nigerians keep coming at them. Good work by Okocha. But Costa Curva able to head clear. Another free kick to Italy. It lead up a few more precious seconds. Kick taken very quickly. Massaro's on his way. There's nobody upfield in support. You can't really blame the Italians for that. That was a pretty weary off pass from Massaro. Yes, it'd have been better staying with the ball. It'd have been better just turning and trying to somehow rather than negotiate it into the corner fight. Just over two minutes to go. Clements Westerhoff, the Nigerian coach, pointing forward down on the bench. Wants it played up to Nwanu and Yakini, but here's Donadoni. Costa Curta. A little fortuitously, but he's found Roberto Baggio. Now that had Rufai scattering back to his goal. Well, his team was so close to going through. But now, well, the pendulum has swung the other way. But Italy aren't there yet. Fernini George. Yukini wants it played into the box. Just too far for him, though. Donadoni. The Italians straining every sinew now in defense of their lead. Roberto Baggio. That's a very, very dangerous challenge. I think if the referee's a bit lenient here, if he doesn't, if he didn't take any action against that. But I do say, I think you've got to give for their turns and attacks him, and that's that's blatant. 
The kick's taken quickly, too quickly for Massaro. I do think you've got to give the Italians credit for half for their performance in the extra time. I mean, I would have thought Nigeria would have been well the favourites for extra time, playing against a team with ten men. But to be fair, the Italians, they've swamped the game. We're into the last minute now. Okocha. Yakini. He may have to go alone. But he's found Nawanu. Get back towards Yakini. And well past the post. Stop Olia. Nigerian dejection is there to see now. The Italians are around the ground. Urging their team on, urging them to survive. Now the last few seconds. We're almost into any injury time. I don't think there's going to be too much of that. Donadoni. Right up towards Massaro. Another goal now would surely settle it. Still Massaro. Roberto Baggio. Still Baggio. And exhaustion there took over. Luano powering forward. Okocha. Okocha's run. And Yakini! Vital block. By Costa Corta. Elise with a shot that's charged down. Edit Pojo. Now Okocha. The last few seconds on the watch of the Mexican referee. And again, more defiance from the Italians. Elise. Yakini was lurking in the middle, but it's all over! Italy have done it! Well, we may have criticised them for their earlier performances, but you have to hear, pay tribute to their resolve, their character, in somehow surviving. Two goals from Roberto Baggio, transformed the game, just when it seemed they were going out to this brave and resilient Nigerian side. Yeah, full credit to them. I mean, they, they, they were looking down the barrel, they looked out of it, they've come back. There's certainly the performance in extra time. In a way, I don't know whether the sending up of Zola gave them that little bit of extra buzz they needed. But uh, in extra time, they, they, they were well worth the result. Well, the Nigerians are trooping off now, understandably, totally, totally dejected. And among the really, really Italians, well, there's total euphoria. They have done it. Italy have beaten Nigeria, but my word, it was a close call. Two goals to one, two from Roberto Baggio to cancel out the earlier one from Amoniki. And Italy are through to the quarterfinals.